So, generally, every day, mainly pre-pandemic, um, when I'm out and about, when I'm going to work or the shops, um, mostly well-meaning members of the public will come up and grab me. Now, a lot of the time it is well-meaning and they want to take me across the road or help me on and off the train. But when people do that and don't say anything, it can be really frightening. Mm. And I have been campaigning about this for a while, just to raise awareness, to say that if you want to help a disabled person, a blind person, just say hi, you know, just, just offer an arm, say, would you like to cross the road? Because I've been taken across roads I didn't want to cross and then told I'm someone's good deed for the day. I've been shoved into seats on the bus quite roughly. Um, the, the best is sometimes I'm around King's Cross in London and there's a few blind organisations around there and several people keep trying to enthusiastically take me to the Royal National Institute for the Blind and I have to say, I don't live there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm actually off to the pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, as you say, you know, lots of people being well-intentioned but also some who really aren't, who are, yeah. taking ad are trying to take advantage of you. So I would say again, pre-pandemic, an average of once to twice a month, I experience either aggressive physical behaviour or sexual behaviour, usually from men. Um, they will take advantage of the fact that it is seen as nice to assist a disabled person, whether they ask for it or not. And they will announce that they're going to help me. So they will say, oh, don't worry, love, I'll take you across the road. And then usually in the process of doing it, they might grope my breast or make <gasps> inappropriate sexual comments. They won't let go of me. They'll try to take me somewhere against my will. They'll quiz me about my experience of sexual intimacy. Um, and it's very frightening. What do you do when that happens? It's, it's kind of just survival mode, if I'm honest. Yeah. With the grabbing more generally, I've kind of come up with a solution, which is I just make a noise. Because I found when I was saying to people, please don't touch me or please let go, they would either ignore me and be, no, like, no, no, love, I'm just helping you, I'm just helping you. Or it would get very hostile. So people would, would swear at me, call me ungrateful, etc. So now I just, I just make a bit of a, like a squawk almost. I just sort of go, ah! And then that, that makes people react where they take their hands off me. Yeah. Um, but because otherwise, sometimes I'm genuinely, you know, toing and froing in the street saying, please let go. And, and have you, like, reported this to the police and things when this happens? Yeah, a few times. And then, then what, what happens? Nothing. I was told the first time I reported it, a man had followed me through a train station and kept grabbing me and trying to touch my breasts and making inappropriate comments. And when I reported it to the police, they said that I was confused and that it was probably just a homeless person. Godness. And, that, and, and so did you... Have you just stopped reporting it now, or...? I report it because it contributes to the statistics. Mm. Yeah. And uh, that, I know, makes the evidence for change. So a lot of kind of hate crime legislation has come as a result of statistics. Yeah. So I just kind of see that as something I do to try and support other people. Eventually, we might get some more stringent laws around it. Yeah. I mean, you're, you, you're an incredibly confident woman. Do you feel, though, like... I mean, how do you feel when this happens? It's traumatising. And it's the fact that it never stops. It's the fact that I have to take it every single day, being touched without permission. And, yes, it's very nice when people want to help me, but how do I know? Because I'm also used to these violent or sexual interactions. If you take me across the road into traffic and I have no idea what your agenda is, it's terrifying. Yeah. And I have anxiety about it. My mental health has been impacted. Um, and sometimes I don't want to leave the house. Yeah. So what, what needs to be done, do you think? Because, as you say, you're campaigning about this. You know, I'm assuming you're obviously talking to other people who this happens to as well. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen? So I've been campaigning uh, on social media mainly, and I use a hashtag called Just Ask, Don't Grab. And hundreds of disabled people share their stories because it's not... Just me, it's not just blind people, it's wheelchair users, older people, um, even, you know, people who, people who are deaf. Um, it happens to lots of women, especially, who are disabled. I think as a culture and as a society, we need more education about disability because I think 
the well-meaning grabbing, it comes from a place of panic. Mm. People see me at a roadside and they freak out. And they, their instinct is to use their hands, not to use their words. So my advice for people is educate yourself about disability. We need businesses and organisations and especially customer service roles to have disability awareness training yeah. so that they can also spot the signs when someone is in a criminal situation and is experiencing harassment and we need people to identify that. Now, I don't want everyone to ride in like a white knight because that can be dangerous. But the best thing for me, if you see someone who's disabled, who's been harassed, just check in afterwards. Yeah. Just say, you all right? Do you need a cup of tea? I saw that. Can I be a witness? Because when someone does that for me, it makes me feel validated that it wasn't me just making a fuss. Because so often I'm told, oh, well, people are being nice and you shouldn't complain because they just want to help you on the bus. And I go, well, mm. I just want to choose who touches me.